Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here, coming to you from St. John Lutheran Church and St. Luke Lutheran Church in central Wisconsin. This video is for Sunday, December 20th, 2020. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. I'm here at St. Luke today, and I ha I'm showing you a picture of the nativity scene that we have set up at St. Luke. Um, as you can see, it's kind of incomplete. We don't have all the wise men in there, and well, the biggest thing is missing, and that's the Christ child in the manger. Well, that's because it's still Advent. We're still preparing for the arrival, the birth of the Savior into our world. And so we look at this scene, and we look forward with great anticipation to celebrating the coming of our Lord Jesus. So thank you for being with me. I pray that our time here is indeed a blessing to us all. The readings for this fourth Sunday of Advent, the first one from the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and verse 16, and the epistle lesson from Romans 16, verses 25 through 27. I encourage you to read those two passages on your own. I share with you the reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and we will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can see here the Christmas tree that is at St. Luke, uh, another very tall, very full tree, decorated and beautiful. And this is just yet another reminder of the celebration that's coming as we look forward to the birth of our Savior. Now here I am in front of the camera and next to this beautiful tall tree and enjoying the lights and the decorations and all the parts of, well, again, celebrating the birth of the Savior. And we are in the fourth Sunday of Advent, so the reading today from the Gospel lesson was Mary, the mother of Jesus, being told what was going to happen to her what was going to happen in her and what was going to happen in her life and what an incredible thing she was going to be a part of. That is the gift of salvation given to the world. Think about that for a moment. Think about what must that have been like for Mary. Now, we could take a lot from her response as she says, I am the Lord's servant. Whatever God wants, I am willing to, to do. And that's, that's a Pretty amazing attitude, certainly an example for us as we, we think about God's call in our lives. But I actually don't want to look at what Mary says and does. I want to look at what God does here. If you think about Mary and, and Joseph too, you, you can read his story in Matthew chapter 1. The two of them, God basically disrupts their lives. Again, think about it. He interrupts their lives with this incredible thing, this impossible situation 
that he puts them in. There's probably, it doesn't say it in the scriptures, but we can probably be pretty sure, since Joseph, of course, finds out about it, that there's some scandal involved with this whole scene, this whole situation for Mary. After all, they aren't yet married, and now she is with child. And Joseph originally is going to divorce her because she's obviously broken the marriage covenant, but he doesn't because of the dream. And the dream that the angel tells him, this is the, the son of God. So don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. But the other people in their lives, somebody else certainly would have known that as well. At least her parents would have known that she was expecting a child. And I can't imagine that conversation went real well. Hey, mom, dad, an angel came and talked to me, and guess what? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that probably was real easy for her or for Joseph, especially after things start going forward for them in this whole situation. God comes into their lives and essentially turns it upside down, just totally disrupts everything. Again, think about it. They were going to have a wedding, get married, raise a family, do all the things that they had planned. That's what people do. And now all of a sudden, no, God says, this is what's going to happen. And yeah, you're going to have a family, but the first one is going to be the son of God. And he's going to be the savior of the world. And we know, of course, if you keep reading the story, all the things that happened to them after this announcement with the birth and the shepherds and the magi, the wise men, uh, the escape into Egypt, they're running for their lives. There's a lot that happens to them because of this situation. Again, this total disruption, this total interruption by God into their lives. And it certainly wasn't easy for them. And yet, what God is doing in their lives is for their good. And ultimately for the good of all people. Now, you and I, we have things come into our life, disruptions and interruptions. There, there are times when our lives get turned upside down by things. And I'm not saying it's all God's doing, certainly not. Our own sin and the devil and the things of this world, all of them work against us and mess things up for us on a regular basis. Is it possible, is it possible that God works in the middle of all of that? Is it possible that in fact he can even work using the disruptions of our lives? That he can work in the midst of all our interruptions and upheavals and all the rest of it and that he can actually work good for us and for the good of others? Yes, it's not just possible, it is in fact how he works. He continues to be active in our lives every single day, carrying out his will. And remember, his will is for our good and the good of the other people in our lives. He is doing that. And it's, again, not always him who's causing those disruptions. Many times it's not. But God is able to use those things and work in the middle of them in order to bring about good for us, in order to carry out his will and just like Mary and Joseph, perhaps some of the things that happen in our own life are happening in a way that will ultimately result in good for the people around us. We may not always be able to see it, and it certainly isn't always easy. But we can trust, we can be assured that God is working in all of it to bring about good for us. I want to tell you about a man I, I was told about once by a recording artist. Uh, this is a person who traveled across the country, who toured and gave concerts and, and uh, did um, spent a lot of time on the road, did a lot of traveling. And she had a bus driver. That she had a big old tour bus and her bus driver, the guy that drove her and her band all over the country, he had a very interesting story to tell. Because this man, he and his wife had, had a son after they were first married, a year or so after they were married, had a son. And unfortunately, a few years later, in, a, in an awful tragedy, their son was killed. And a couple years after that, 
he and his wife adopted a, a baby boy, and so they had an adopted son. And now it was some 20, 20 plus years later. And the recording artist asked the bus driver about the whole situation, and she said to the bus driver, how can you handle that? Because she had kids of her own, and she said, I can't imagine the tragedy, the, just the incredible, overwhelming sorrow that I would think you live with every day, still, all these years later, to have lost a child in that way. How, how can you deal with that? And he said, well, you're right. Every day I think about the son that we had. And every day, yeah, it, it's hard. You wonder what would he have become and, and what would have happened, where would he be in life right now? And certainly we miss him. But there are two things about this whole situation, he said, that give me joy. The first is that I know, because of what Jesus did, because he died on the cross and he rose from the dead, I know that I will see my son again. That because of the gift of eternal life from Jesus, I know that I will get to see my son in heaven again. And that will be a wonderful reunion that I am looking forward to. So that, he said, gives me joy. And the second thing is that because we lost our son, my wife and I, a couple years later, adopted a baby, a baby boy. And that son, our own new son now, has grown up and, and here he's 20 plus something years old and I cannot imagine my life without him. I can't imagine what I would be missing if we didn't have this incredible young man in our lives and what a blessing he has been for us and what incredible things he's going to do for God's kingdom down the road. And while yes, it is a horrible tragedy and it still grieves my heart to have lost our firstborn son, Still, I find joy every day in the fact that I have this other son who still holds my heart and who is such an incredible blessing to me. And that gives me joy as well. And to know that that's how God works, that he can bring about good out of tragedy, that's incredible. Now my friends, that's a bit of, a, of an extreme example of God working out good in a horrible situation. But it is how God works. It is how he works in the lives of his people. Now I want you to consider what things in your life, what disruptions and interruptions and upheavals, what things have happened to you, perhaps especially in these last many months that we've sort of all had our lives disrupted, is it possible that God worked in the midst of those things to bring about good for you? What has he been doing during all of this time? All the different things that are going on. Even in the face of disappointment, even in the face of sorrow, even in tragedy, God can and does and will work good for his people. It's not easy. We won't always be able to figure it out and perhaps we won't even see the good and understand it until we're in heaven with him. But we can be assured that God does indeed work for our good in the midst of all things. Think about it, my friends. The worst thing ever, an innocent man given a sham trial and railroaded all the way to the cross and undergoing horrible suffering, an innocent man dies and that is a tragedy that's what happened to Jesus but his death was the greatest good for us his death wins us the forgiveness of sins and his resurrection gives us the victory over death and the grave out of that horrible thing God brings about good for us all that is how our God works so as you continue on toward Christmas, think about what Mary and Joseph went through and think about what God did in their lives. And that even in the middle of all the craziness that they had to deal with, God is there working in them and through them to bring about good for them and ultimately for us all. He will do the same in your life each and every day. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Please now pray with me. Oh Lord God, I praise you for your blessings. Share it with me every day in so many ways. You care for me, provide for me, and are with me in all things. Oh Lord, as I deal with the changes and challenges of this life, strengthen my faith to rely on you, always open to your work in my heart. Oh Lord God, I praise you for your gifts of life and love. I pray for those who celebrate this week. Katie Hartwig, Caitlin Brandel, Kyle Gronke, Peggy Richardson, Keith Kegler, Elsie Tesca, Zachary Kotick, Doris Milkey, and Robert and Marcelle Becker. As they rejoice in your blessings, O Lord, move them to rejoice in ways that bring glory to your name and lead others to see your love in their lives. O Lord God, I praise you for your gifts of healing and comfort. For those who are sick, who are grieving, who are struggling with depression, restore them to health according to your will, and visit them with your peace and your presence. Lord God, I praise you for your gifts of wisdom, for those who are in positions of leadership in my church, in my community, and in my country. I pray that you would grant them humble hearts that seek your guidance in all things. Let them act according to your will and for the good of your people. O oh Lord God, I praise you for your gift of prayer. You have invited me to call upon you, and you have promised to hear and answer according to your love. So at your invitation, and as Jesus has taught, I now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, my friends, for joining me for this time together. I hope that you have been encouraged and that you will know each and every day that God can and does and will continue to work for the good of his people in all things and that he will work for good in your life as well. I conclude this video standing in front of yet another of our decorations. I'm not sure if you can see it uh, quite so well because it's very bright outside and this is a, a display in the window here, but there's a little candle flickering at the top here and you've got the, uh, the greens and the snowflakes and a little angel on the window. Just one of the many, many ways that we again look forward to the celebration of the greatest good of all, the Lord Jesus Christ coming into our world. Be blessed, my friends.